Yeah, I was obsessed with Peterson for a few years there. He was, uh, I still really like him, although I think he's kind of, I think he's, his shadow is taking over in a way that I, 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 I'm not enjoying right now, um, or I'm not agreeing with him with or something. There, there's something like he, he interviewed this, the North Korean defector. Did you see her? Yeah, what did you think about that? Well, she uh, apparently there were some there were some articles about how she was actually so she she described herself as being like lowest to below in North Korea, like starving all the time, barely had enough food, you know, terrible, terrible life. And then she was on this South Korean show, like maybe a decade earlier, this reality TV show describing her life as being from the very upper echelons of North Korea. And her mother was there. Oh. Okay. And so like, I, it seems her, her claims seem incredibly dubious. Um, and other people, uh -oh. have, yeah, it just seems, and I, I, I just think about Peterson, like I, I I owe so much to him, but like at the same time, I feel like he is. She had this whole, oh, and no, North Korea, and now we're we're becoming just like North Korea, like the communists and the liberals and all that. She would like have these talking points that seem just completely geared towards getting that right wing money, like just selling her book to all the right wing oh. people who who agreed with it and towed that party line. And it just seems like Peterson is kind of falling into that trap. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'd agree with that. I think he's. I think he's playing to the right way too much. And he's, yeah, he's not, you know, not dialectical enough, not open enough. And I mean, he's at his best when he's magnanimous and gives, gives credit to the, gives credit to the left-wing positions. Like he's at his best when he says um, that, that the left, when it's really functioning at its best is speaking truth to power and is standing up for the downtrodden and all of that. Um, so yeah, and sometimes he is in that space. There were other accusations as well that that article was sponsored by China. And I haven't actually fact-checked. I haven't gone through and watched the, the South Korean oh, uh, reality TV show. And so, you know, you can go and do that and, and look at it yourself. But uh, other people online apparently had. I, I don't think it's that hard to fact-check. I just haven't done it. Um, it. I mean, it's hard to know as well. Like, I mean, this is the funny thing with the IDW is that, I mean... And this happens with everything, really. And I, this is this is kind of like the system I tried to formalize in my PhD. And actually, hopefully, I'll get around to when I get to do my book of essays, which will hopefully be the book I get to do after I do the IDW book. Um, it's probably been 10 or 12 years in the making. But I mean, it's a pretty straightforward point. But so much, so much of the problems of the world is things that start out in a good place and then somehow slip into the bad place and get corrupted. And so, I mean, the IDW is kind of the same. I mean, good stuff, a lot of good arguments, a lot of good ideas, and you never quite know when suddenly now, you know, some great vested interest is aware of the, uh, the cultural power of the IDW and now they're using it for their own ends. And yeah, how do you know? How do you know when the people themselves haven't gone to a dark place, looked into the abyss and, you know, the abyss looks into them or... Yeah, or when somehow it's co-opted. So yeah, that, yeah, it's, it's tricky. I, I did certainly find myself. Um, Peterson is quite anti anti radicalization, or or so I, I found myself being ideolog ide ideologically possessed by Peterson, while also fully being aware that I was ideologically possessed. And I would kind of this is back in maybe 2017 or something, but I would be like, okay, what do I disagree with him about? And I think that's. <laughs> like uh, you, you have to. I don't think we all anyone should agree with anyone one hundred percent on everything. That's crazy. No, it's good to ask that. What do I disagree with him about? I mean, but yeah, the, I mean, these are the these are the anti radicalization questions we have to ask ourselves all the time. You know, so we don't get radicalized. It reminds me as well as of like a, a teaching technique, because um, about the, the the whole sort of radicalization thing you were asking before. Um, yeah, one thing I often, one thing I really, really try to do is if I have a student I really disagree with, I try to be really nice to them. That's like a conscious thing I do. Yeah. It's like, because I know that, I, I know back when I was a student and, and so many of the teachers disagreed with me and really smashed me. I'm like, God, what's the one thing I can do, you know? Even if I can't see into my own soul and, you know, even if I'm twisted, I can at least consciously try to be really nice to them. And not, like, I don't mean like overly nice, but sort of generous and just listen, 
help them, you know, 